Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to revisit one of my favorite movies growing up and that is The Secret of Nim. And it's book, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. So growing up, Mrs. Frisbee or The Secret of Nim was one of my favorite movies. And I had realized that it was based on a book. I knew that it was based on a Newbery medal winner and it was kind of on my radar to read someday, but I never really got around to it. Then in March, uh, Krista at Books and Jams was reading as many Newbery medal winners as she could. And she read Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. And suddenly I realized oh my gosh, I have that book in my classroom library that I haven't read. And it's a wonderful opportunity for me to read the book and revisit this wonderful movie from my childhood. So what I loved about the movie growing up was Jeremy the Crow. He is hilarious in the movie. His, his, he's got a very... Um, quirky, wry sense of humor, and he's bumbling and awkward, and it's just wonderful. And I just really liked them, that about him. I loved how strong the character of Mrs. Brisby is in the movie. She um, works so hard to keep her children safe. She finds herself into situations she can't get out of, and she gets out of them. She's so strong and su such a wonderful character. Uh, so, and I really liked the children. The children in the movie were so adorable and cute and they were really fun to watch too. What I realized watching it now is that Martin is voiced by Will Wheaton and um, the oldest daughter, can't remember her name, but is voiced by Shannon Doherty, which I did not know that. That was pretty fun to realize. Anyway, so the first thing that you may have noticed from the title of the book and my talking about the movie is that they changed the name of the main family from Frisbee to Brisbee. And according to the International Movie Database, uh, they did that because they were worried about copyright with how much Frisbee sounds like the toy Frisbee that you throw with, an, at, with another person. And that sounded so weird to me, but also it absolutely makes sense. Let's talk about the plot. So in Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, Mrs. Frisbee is a recently widowed mouse. And by recently, I mean within the past year, probably the past six months. Um, she is Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee. And we never actually hear, know her first name. She's always referred to as Mrs. Frisbee or Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee. She lives in the garden of Mr. Fitzgibbon with her four children. And... When plowing time comes around, they have to move their house to a different part of the garden so that they don't get killed by the plow. However, when they have to move, her son, Timmy, comes down with a terrible illness and she needs to get him healed before that can happen. She goes to see a white mouse named Mr. Ages and Mr. Ages gives her a anecdote to use. He is the apothecary of the garden. He, he um, creates different um, herb concoctions in order to heal their maladies. And he gives her a something to put into a broth in order to help Timothy and says that he has pneumonia and he needs to stay in bed and shouldn't be outside at all. He's going to survive, but if his it, if he recovers and the cold comes back too soon or the pneumonia comes back too soon, he's probably going to die. Which as you can imagine was quite a harrowing thing for Mrs. Frisbee to hear. As she's coming back from Mr. A Ages, she runs into a crow named Jeremy who is stuck and she saves him from the cat dragon. Dragon is 
the cat of Farmer Fitzgibbons. Jeremy wants to help her in her quest to save her son. He takes her to her house and then later takes her to see the great owl. And the great owl tells her that because she is Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee, she should go see the rats of Nim and they will help her. The rats of Nim are a very cloistered group of rats that have abnormal strength and longevity. And they are that way because of Nim. Mrs. Frisbee goes to see the rats of Nim. There she meets Justin and she meets Nicodemus and she hears stories of Jenner. And of course, her husband, Jonathan Frisbee. Now, let's think about some differences here. In the movie, Jeremy the Crow is a very awkward, gangly, boisterous crow that is terrified of a lot of things and does them to, in a begrudging way, because he feels like he owes Mrs. Brizzy his life, which he does. And every part of the movie that he's in, he plays a comedic uh, comedy relief part. And that's what I loved about him in the movie, but that's absolutely not him in the book. But I, as much as I loved him in the movie, I really liked him in the book too. The other thing that I noticed is that Jenner in the movie is the rat villain and he is trying to usurp the power that the rats have and the rats have this power a lot because of the magic that they possess. In Mrs. Frisbee and the rats of Nim. It has nothing to do with magic. It has everything to do with the fact that they were experimented on and they are just have super strength for a rat and they are super smart and intelligent and were taught to read. And they were given these experimental drugs that made them um, older. And Jenner in both the movie and the book is against a plan that they have. In the movie, he becomes very villainous. And in the book, he becomes somebody that or you emphasize with, um, um, that you empathize with. He is a character that just disagrees. And because he disagrees, he kind of leaves. And you hear very little about him beyond the fact that he didn't like the plan. Um, and that was really weird. Those two changes seemed very weird to me, very strange, because honestly, I would have still liked the movie without that change. But I think that the change was made because they needed to have more of a villainous character. And it's kind of in the book, it's more of a man versus nature or a main character versus nature conflict, where here they wanted to have um, a character versus character conflict in the movie. And they also had the character versus nature and character versus society, which it wasn't necessary to have all that conflict in the movie in order to tell the story. I didn't think the magic was necessary either. Um, I found this book really engaging. I really liked it. Um, and I still did also like the movie. And it was amazing to me how much I didn't remember that the plan was actually mentioned in here and that the story, how the story is told of how they become the rats of Nim is very similar to this. And it's amazing how it all goes together and it works together. How much of this book is actually in the movie is relatively well done. I 
I'm sure that there are reasons for adding the magic and add, adding um, the villain Jenner. And it probably is the reasons that I've said, but um, I still really found this to be really cute and I still loved it. And I gave the book four stars, but I still really liked it. It, it still felt like the, the girl power <laughs> awesomeness and that I remember from growing up. And this was still very much a woman who is doing, woman mouse, doing everything she could for her family. And it, it was just a very beautiful book. So that's what I have to say about that. I hope that um, this made sense. There you have it. That's my opinion on the book versus the movie. I have to say that knowing what I do about the book, if I'd read the book first, I wouldn't have liked the movie. So I'm glad, kind of, that I did it. However, I think they're both pretty good. There you go. <laughs> Happy reading.